Hey, it's Juliana from Stack. So today we are here in the sub zones of the Kalang Wampo HDB Estates. A couple of weeks ago, we were here to tour a development called Vandermeer Light, and we had a lot of fun just discovering what this neighborhood has to offer. And today we're back here again, but this time to take a look at a HDB DBSS called City View at Boon King. Since its MOP in 2016, this development has actually seen multiple more than $1 million transactions and this is of no surprise as apart from being in the city fringe, this development offers you great connectivity and amenities. In this tour, we'll be taking a look at what City View has to offer and in the second half of the video, we'll also be touring a cosy 1,173 square feet 5 room flat that's situated on a high floor, so do hang around for that. Now, let's start the tour. Making my way to the dropper point, let me just share with you some quick facts about City View. It is located at the corner of Bunking Road and Bendemia Road. It TOP'd in January 2011 and MOP'd in 2016. The development over here consists of three residential blocks that are 40 storeys in height and we've got 714 units in total. We've got a unit mix of three, four and five room flats with sizes ranging from 732 square feet to 1,281 square feet. The developer is Hoi Hub Sunway Development, the same one behind other HDB DBSS that we've toured in the past, such as the peak at Topayo as well as Lake Vista. So if you haven't seen those videos, do check them out in our playlist. But now that we know this development a little bit better, let us go and take a closer look. Starting over here at the main drop-off point, this is located right next to the car park entrance. This isn't your usual roundabout porch, however, I can see two cars fitting here comfortably while still being sheltered by the roofing above. The main entrance to the development is located along Boon King Road and since this is a slightly smaller development, this is the only drop-off point that's available over here. However, residents can choose to alight at the sheltered linkways at the rear of the development. One thing though, I do wish they've put in a little bit more effort into sprucing up this main drop-off point as it does seem a little bit underwhelming. I've had a better sense of arrival in the HDB developments that we've seen in the past. And right behind the drop-off point, we have this event space. This space is relatively wide and we've got a decent ceiling height. You'll also see that ceiling fans are provided over here. Interestingly, there are two event spaces over here that are located side by side. This could be a benefit as you could run one large event by combining the two spaces or you could run two separate events that could run concurrently at the same time. Do take note that there is minimal privacy over here as there is high pedestrian traffic from the drop-off point as well as the sheltered linkways. A couple of the lower floor units are also able to view directly in. That being said, this place is highly accessible for your guests as it's right behind the drop-off point. There are sheltered linkways that wrap around the development and that ensures convenient foot connectivity within the estate for the residents over here. And one of the most interesting things I've noticed right from the very first time I visited City View would be the finishing of the pavements. So here we have a checkerboard floor tile pattern which is really eye-catching and it does create a unique visual effect as you're walking around the development. Moving further into the development, we have a playground over here that's meant for two to five year olds. And in my opinion, it is a little bit small. However, there's a ton of space for your little ones to run around. And on the side, there are bench seatings available for parents to comfortably wait for their kids. And right beside the playground, we have this entire area that's dedicated to barbecue activities. We have two barbecue pits here along with two barbecue pavilions. And in each pavilion, there are table sets that are available. However, there is ample space around for you to set up additional tables and chairs if you need. And right across from the barbecue area, we have the adult and elderly fitness corner. There are about nine different types of equipment available that spread across two fitness stations within this development, which I feel is sufficient for a development of this size. One thing to note, however, is that these fitness stations are located directly across from a ground floor unit, so there is minimal privacy in that regard. 
And since we have a decent view of the blocks from here, let me just touch briefly on the facade. It is primarily white stucco, actually very similar to Nature Art DBSS in Bishan. And I do like the simplicity of the facade design and colour. Only the four and five room flats here have a balcony and you'll also notice that the windows are three quarter in height across all of the rooms. We'll have a closer look later when we're in the unit. But before we head up, let me just share with you about some of the amenities nearby. For other shopping and eateries establishments in the close proximity, you are a 7 minutes walk away from the cafes and restaurants located within the shop house enclave of Jalan Versa. We've got City Square Mall and Aperia Mall that are both under a 12 minutes walk out. For recreational activities, Wampo River and the Wampo PCN is a 10 minutes walk or a 4 minute cycle out. Jalan Besar Stadium is 8 minutes walk away, while Kalang Stadium is a 15 minute cycle out. And with regards to public transport, City View is sandwiched between two MRT stations, so we have both Bendemir and Bunking stations under a 7 minutes walk out. For those of you who drive, the closest expressways, we have the CTE and PIE, with both on-ramps being under a 7 minutes drive away. Both of which can take you to Orchard Road and the CBD in just under 12 minutes. For parents with little ones, the primary schools within the 1km radius, we have Hongwen School and Bendemir Primary. And now that we're done with the facilities and amenities, let us head to the unit. So before we head into the unit, let me just share with you some information about the common areas of this block. Um, as expected of most HDB DBSS, the main ground floor of the lift lobby is gated and it does require you a card access to enter. This provides you with an extra layer of security and privacy for the residents over here. There are 40 storeys in this block with 3 lifts serving all 6 units per floor. The corridors here are not the widest and the unit entrances are adjacent to each other so do take note of that. But enough of the common areas, let's head into the unit. the unit let me just share with you a little bit more about this home this is a five room flat that is 1173 square feet in size the homeowners are a couple with two kids and they purchased this home a year ago for one million dollars they also spend 100k in renovations to reconfigure the layout and improve the interior design and one more thing if you're enjoying this tour so far do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so to receive future updates where we tour interesting developments all over singapore and with that out of the way let's start off at the entryway as you enter the unit, you'll be immediately greeted by this entryway nook. This serves as a fantastic addition for you to comfortably put on your shoes. Right next to it, there is a cabinet for your shoe rack as well as general household storage. The floor of the entire house, including the kitchen and the bedrooms, is covered in the same wood vinyl, giving the entire home a continuous design flow. At the end of the entryway, we have this open kitchen with a long stretch of kitchen counter. And along this stretch, we have lots of storage options both below and above. Also, a good amount of worktop space for you to utilize. And in this kitchen, there is a narrow window which allows for natural light and ventilation. The bomb shelter is also located in the kitchen. So if this isn't used for storage, it can double up as your dry pantry room. At the end of this kitchen would be the service yard. So the wall over here was hacked away to make more room for the kitchen. And over here you'll find the stackable washer and dryer. But for now, let's head into the dining room. As an extension to the kitchen, we have this pantry area which houses your integrated oven, a wine fridge and a refrigerator. And right next to it, there is the pantry counter which has your coffee machine and more display shelving. And when this area is not in use, you can actually conceal it with the cabinet doors. This pantry does serve as a fitting backdrop to the four-seater dining table that is right across it. And with this amount of space, I do sense that we can even switch it up to a six-seater if you wish. This living room is actually very generous in terms of length and it does currently fit a three-seater L-shaped couch with a good amount of distance to the inbuilt TV console. And the TV console that we have over here spans the entire length of the living room, 
You'll notice that the cabinet doors are finished in a shaker style which does add a bit of texture for a TV console of this size. And further past the living room, we have this open space that's right in front of the balcony. This does act as a children play area where the kids can comfortably carry out their activities. So to access the balconies, we have to go through this floor to ceiling high glass bifold doors. But one thing I do want to share with you is that the homeowners have installed something that I thought was pretty cool for the curtains. So these are actually automated curtains. Uh, because of the large windows, it does allow in a lot of natural light into the unit. But if you do want to soften the lighting, this does come in very handy. Stepping out into the balcony, we have this pretty good view. And also because we are on a high floor, we have this fairly unobstructed view of Boon King and the surrounding estates. But now that we've seen this view, let's head back in to check out the bedrooms. The first common bedroom is currently the daughter's room and it is pretty standard in size. Apart from the built-in wardrobe, all of the other fixtures are movable. So this does allow for the layout to easily change as the child grows older. I do also like how the homeowners have chosen to paint half the wall. It does help to add a touch of character to the room. And here we have the second common bedroom, which is a similar layout to the first. This is currently used as the son's room. And as you can see, they've kept it simple as well as their son is still a toddler. But that being said, you could easily fit a double or a queen size bed in these two rooms in the future. On the opposite end, you'll find the common bathroom, which is mainly utilized by the kids. No hacking works were done over here as the homeowners opted to overlay the floor and walls with these grey tiles. There's also a feature wall right here where they've laid the subway tiles in a chevron pattern. And finally, the master bedroom. So as both of their windows here are bay windows, they've creatively constructed this platform not just to hide the base structure but also to house the bit as well as create additional storage space underneath. With this, they have effectively maximised their space area. They've even managed to fit in a study table on this end with a full height wardrobe over here. But speaking of full height wardrobes, there's something else that I want to show you. Here we have a dedicated walk-in closet located right next to the entrance of the room. There are four panels with this L-shaped wardrobe and you'll notice that it is finished in the same shaker style as we saw previously in the living room. The entrance to the master bathroom was initially located on this side but has been relocated to face the walk-in wardrobe for a better flow and use of space. The master bathroom is pretty sizable and it's typically a layout that you only see in condo developments. So we have the basin that is right by the entrance as well as a dedicated shower area on the end of the bathroom. There's even a three-quarter high window over here which opens up to an amazing view of the city. So that's all for this unit. Once again, I'd like to thank the homeowners for opening up their beautiful family home for us to visit. Right now, we'll head downstairs to wrap up this tour. So now that we've seen the facilities, amenities and a unit, let me just share with you some of my final thoughts about this development as a whole. All in all, City View offers you city fringe living with great connectivity to the CBD and city region via public transport, major roads and expressways nearby. And if you're one who relies heavily on public transport for your daily commute, it is close walking proximity to two MRT stations over here and that will serve as a great convenience for you. Additionally, City View is conveniently located within walking distance to multiple amenities and eatery hubs. However, since this is a slightly smaller development, it is lacking in the facilities department. So if you're looking for a wide range of recreational areas, then City View might not be the one for you. As a whole, this area is bustling with activity, so do expect traffic noise from the main road as well as construction works nearby. If you're looking for a tranquil area to live in, then City View might be less than ideal. If you're interested, we'll pop in the unit mix and price over here. We have three, four and five room flats with unit sizes ranging from 732 square feet to 1,281 square feet. For more information, you can read more at stackedhomes.com editorial. And as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. That's all that I have for you today. We'll see you in the next one.